up, guys? Hi. Rila, you okay? Fine. Why? You just seem less bubbly, is all. Eh. Okay, uh, hope you guys are ready to tune in! I'm Rila. And I'm actually a little concerned. Uh, I mean, I'm Riley. Riley. Uh, and you're watching Bulletoon Weekly! First up, some movie news. Uh, looks like the official release dates of all four Avatar sequels have been announced. Oh, great. Well, they're planning for the second one to come out in December of 2020. Then the rest will come out in December of 2021, 2024, and 2025. Think I'll pass. Not big on the idea of paying to take a nap. Can you seriously think of nothing nice to say about the first movie? Michelle Rodriguez is in it. She's cool. Oh. Right. Something you don't immediately take away? You have to admit, it's pretty. You're right, it's visually amazing. See, that wasn't so hard, right? Wanna know what else is pretty but awful? <laughs> you know what? I'm not even mad. That's actually so incredibly petty, it's almost impressive. So in other news... You all might want to take cover. <sighs> nope. Mellow. Calm. Totally zen. Aww, that's adorable. My little sis is learning to control her temper like a big girl. Don't tempt me, Rila. And Bay, I'm only gonna say this once. Don't. You. Dare. Context would be helpful. The next Transformers movie. An image was revealed giving us a first look at Hot Rod. As in Rodimus Prime. And so help me God if that means what I think it means. Temper, temper, Riley. <laughs> Screw you, Bay, and whoever signs your checks, too. What's the big deal? You don't even like Hot Rod. Oh, him I'm completely indifferent to, but damn you, Bay, if you bastardize everything done by the only good Transformers movie, so help me God, I'll. <laughs> and in other news, apparently Wasp is gonna be front and center in the upcoming Ant Man and Wasp flick. I mean,. Her name's in the title of the movie, so... Yeah, well, for some reason they felt the need to clarify this for us. Wow. Oh yeah, in other news, water is wet! And apparently people die when they are killed! Ha! <laughs> so, let's talk more about Marvel. You seem thrilled. Look, it was either this or talk about an entire week of people involved in the DCEU trying to put out the fires under their asses. Huh? Yeah, not kidding. Apparently last week, everyone just came out of the woodwork to defend the DCEU flicks. Even going all the way back to Man of Steel. <laughs> I'm sensing a lot of fragile egos here. Wouldn't surprise me. So what else did Marvel do? Cracked out a trailer for Cloak and Dagger that I'm really not loving. What was wrong with it? Well, it's looking really, how should I put this, uh, generic teen drama-y. Sounds fun or something. Uh, the trailer didn't give us much, so here's hoping we get another one soon, sans the melodrama. Otherwise, I have a really bad feeling here. Buffy, it ain't. Okay, done. Neat. Well? What? You gonna take over now, or? Meh. Meh? What? No cartoon news? No Japan time? Fine, fine. Japan time, then. There's pretty much nothing. What? I basically covered everything interesting from last week already. Sis, there's gotta be something. Um... Oh, Viz Media licensed the Splatoon manga. What, that's it? That's all I got, yeah. Sorry. No real information on it or anything. Just, that's a thing that's happening now. I'll look into it when it comes out. Um, okay, wow, Rila, something's up, and I'm getting pretty concerned here. Nothing's up, that's just all. That is bull, and you know it. Ah, never mind, we'll just move on. So let me guess, you covered the North American releases? Last week. Yep, my list hasn't changed a bit. Ah, oh, brother. Okay, well, here are the comic solicitations. 
Marvel gave us World of Wakanda number 6, Steve Rogers number 16, Daredevil number 19, Deadpool number 29, Doctor Strange number 19, Invincible Iron Man number 6, Monsters Unleashed number 1, Moon Knight number 13, Miss Marvel number 17, Nick Fury number 1, Punisher number 11, Royals number 2, Secret Empire number 0, Star Lord number 6, Thunderbolts number 12, Totally Awesome Hulk number 18, US Avengers number 5, and Venom number 6, finally! And he's back! Oh man, can't wait to read it! And the Small Eagle Brigade? Alright, them. Usual suspects again. All Star Batman number 9, number 21's of Aquaman, Batman, Green Arrow, Green Lanterns, and Superman, number 19's of Justice League and Nightwing, Batwoman number 2, Deathstroke number 17, Harley Quinn number 18, Super Sons number 3, and Trinity number 8. Okay, well, do you at least have... Impressions! I sure do! I totally forgot about these! Ow! I think I physically felt the mood whiplash just now. Okay, so I watched a lot of stuff and I don't know how I'm gonna talk about it all. Knowing you, one long fit of squee. So episode three of Renai Bokun was actually pretty funny, but it's still held back by its inability to be serious. Literally at all. So about halfway through the episode, I was just kind of tired. And I probably would have found the rest of it funnier if it had just taken a break from all the gags. Sounds about right. Hell, even Yariko sensei and Monster Musume ease off on the jokes once in a while. That's saying something. Right, exactly. It's important. All good comedy needs is at least a little drama, or the funny wears off. You're saying that like I don't already know. Then My Hero Academia. Fight, Deku, fight! You can be a hero! I believe in you! Weird how we get more pumped up for fake sports than real ones. This season is so intense, and we're only four episodes in. I never know what's going to happen. And some of these new characters are so fun. Like Mei! She's adorkable! And seeing Deku plan everything out is really what makes him stand out. But he isn't the only one. Well, the best superheroes are always the inventive ones. Because even if they have all the power in the world, being smart goes a long way too. Anyway, next was Recreators. Oh my gosh, this one's getting good! It totally answered all my random little questions from before, but now I have whole new ones! And a ton of theories! It was mostly a breather episode. Barely any action, but I'm okay with that because it was funny and took the story in even more interesting directions. And, as a creative person, I can identify with it on so many levels. About stories leaving an impression on people and all the work that goes into making a character come to life. It's just so amazing! This one gets me, man! You wanna move on before you can't use words anymore? I'm trying, Riley! I don't think I'm gonna make it! Well, at least you're becoming self-aware enough to tell. Sugamama was next. I got all caught up and oh my gosh, I love it now! The first two episodes are basically just set up, but it picks up in episode three and really gets going in episode four. I wasn't giving it enough credit at all. It's more than just a supernatural comedy. There actually is other stuff going on, but it is still way funny and dramatic when it needs to be. The animation really brings everything to life and the lore. Yokai are just the best. I love it when anime use them. They're so weird and creative and I can't wait to see what secrets they'll reveal. Like what happened to Kazuya when he was a kid and what happened to his mom and how Kiriha, uh, er, whoops, bad Rila, no spoilers. Oh, just go watch it. Hurry along, Rila. I can sense you're about to burst. Last, the Book of Zero. It wins this week. Well, there's a shocker. I'm not even gonna say much about it, but I love Mercenary more and more as the show goes on. And? And Zero. She's so funny and cute and mischievous and awesome. Waifu, mine. <laughs> ah, there it is. All right, guys, give me a sec. Welcome back to the land of the same, sis. I just can't help it. Oh. Hey, I don't blame you. You're enthusiastic. Yeah, that's it. 
I know you're making fun of me. In other news, people die when they are killed. Oh, har har. Thank you, thank you. I'll be here all week. Or at least until the episode's over anyway. You're such a ham. Yep, sure I am. Guess it runs in the family. What am I going to do with you? Oh, but before we close the show, a quick shout out. Hmm? A, uh, a friend of ours, Axis, did a cover of the Macross Delta opening. Wait, refresh my memory again? Uh, what's that? The one about the idols that have the power to heal people from this virus that drives them berserk. Also, giant robots. The opening was done by... Free, sister! Like hell I'm letting you just skip over giant robots like it's a side note! Riley, if I have to sit and explain the whole thing, we'll be here until next weekend. Uh. Anyway, the opening Ichido Take no Koi Nara was originally performed by Wakyor in the show. She did a cover and it's totally awesome! I'll leave a link in the description. That's our show, everyone! Wow, you actually managed to fill the missing space. Nice. But I do want to ask you something now that you're back to normal. Nani? What the hell was your problem earlier? Oh, well... Sis? It's just that, you know, it's the first episode of our fourth season, and we didn't have a lot to talk about. Okay, let me get this straight. You are pouty because the entertainment gods didn't honor us with a lot of news to talk about for a fourth season of a show that doesn't even have seasons. Well, when you put it like that, it does sound a little silly. <laughs> really? I'm thinking. Th that's what Mom always says when she's mad. Maybe we should just end the episode here. Uh, uh, if you liked what you saw, give our like button a zap and share with your friends. And I was actually worried about you, too. S subscribe by hitting that left button and check out the site by hitting that right button. Our Patreon link's in the description below. I'm Rila, she's Riley, this has been Bulletin Weekly. Stay tuned! Say, Rila, let's you and me have a little chat about worrying your little sister. <laughs> Get your ass back here! We're gonna have words!